Hi everyone, this is Mr. Cervone. Welcome to my math channel. In today's lesson, we will be learning about angle definitions and introduce some of the angle theorems. To get started, let's look at the following do now. If the measure of angle ABC is equal to 2x minus 3, the measure of angle CBD is equal to x minus 1, the measure of angle ABD is equal to 50 degrees, compute the measure of angle ABC and the measure of angle CBD. So here we can label the 2x minus 3 and x minus 1 for the respective angles in the diagram. Notice also that the m in front of an angle refers to the measure. So in the next coming lessons we will also see how it is important to distinguish between when to use an M and when not to use an M, okay? So usually it has to do with measures versus congruent angles. But let's focus on this now. So how can we solve for X first before even solving for the measure of angle ABC and measure of angle CBD? What we can do here is add up the equations and set it equal to 50 degrees. However, before we do that, it's very important to use any theorem that is applicable to this. So for example, in this case, we want to write that the measure of angle ABC plus the measure of angle CBD is equal to the measure of angle ABD. And the reason is the partition postulate. As you remember, the partition postulate states that the whole is equal to the sum of its parts. Again, we use the partition postulate uh, when we add up all the parts but we add up the measure of those parts, okay? Then we write that 2x minus 3 plus x minus 1 is equal to 50 by the substitution postulate. At this point, we can just do the algebra and figure out the x value. So if you do the math, you end up with x is equal to 18. And then finally, we want to substitute the 18 for the x into 2x minus 3 to get an angle of uh, ABC to be 33 degrees. And then we substitute the 18 into X minus one to get an angle for CBD to be equal to 17 degrees, okay? How do we know that that is the correct answer? Just simply add them up and see if the measure of angle ABD is indeed 50 degrees or not. And in this case it works, so the answer is correct. So in the do now, we just dealt with angles. So let's first define an angle. How is an angle defined? So basically an angle is defined as follows. An angle is formed if and only if two rays intersect at their endpoints. okay? So as you can see, the definition again is a biconditional statement, right? Because it goes both ways. For example, you can say if an angle is formed, then the two rays intersect at their endpoint. Or you can say that if two rays intersect at their endpoints, then an angle is formed. So you can think of the angle to be actually the space in between here. Okay, so it's a space that is being created between two rays. And again, it could also be the outside, the other side. Okay, but usually uh, in most cases we're referring to the angle that is inside, okay, unless otherwise stated. So here are the types of angles that we want to focus on. So let's just review it. First, we have acute angles. Uh, the measure is in between zero and 90 degrees, not including zero and 90 degrees. Then we have right angles that are exactly 90 degrees in measure. Then the obtuse angles are greater than 90 degrees plus less than 180 degrees. Then we have straight angles that are exactly 180 degrees. Reflex angles, that are in between 180 degrees and 360 degrees, not including those, and a full rotation, which is 360 degrees. Moreover, there are other types of angles or angle names that not necessarily focus on the measures. So let's review these really quick. It's very important to know this definition, especially for proofs. For example, we have adjacent angles. So two angles are adjacent if and only if they share the same ray and vertex. As you can see, the one in the middle, so this is the ray that is being shared, okay? Then we have vertical angles, 
So two angles are vertical if and only if the sides of one angle are the opposite rays to the sides of the other angle. For example, these here are vertical angles, okay? Because at this point, you can imagine that we have a set of rays over here and another set of rays over here, okay? So in this case, these are the opposite angles. What about the other ones? Well, it turns out that these here are also defined as vertical angles, okay? But notice that the definition only talks about the location where they're located, okay? Later on, we'll discuss how these are related in terms of measures, which is a different type of definition, okay? Then we have supplementary angles. So according to the definition, two angles are supplementary if and only if the measure of those two angles add up to 180 degrees. And here's an example, 45 degrees here and 135 degrees over here, they both add up to 100 they both add up to 180 degrees. So therefore, these two angles here are considered to be supplementary. Then we have complementary angles. Two angles are complementary if and only if the measure of those two angles add up to 90 degrees, very similar to supplementary angles, but here they add up to 90 degrees. And by the way, when you draw a square here like that, it means that you have a right angle, so therefore it's a 90 degree angle. But we'll talk about the precise definition of that as well. And then finally, we have the definition of linear pair. Two adjacent angles are a linear pair if and only if the angles are supplementary. Notice here that we're not saying that these two angles add up to 180, but we're just using the definition of supplementary angles but we're using just the definition of linear pair that means that they're supplementary. So in the proof, for example, if you want to say that two angles add up to 180, first you need to state that these angles are a linear pair, then you state that they're supplementary, okay? So, but we'll look at some of these examples. So it turns out that there are numerous angle theorems, okay? These theorems are very important so we can use them in proofs, okay? Also, these are theorems because they can be proven. So let me introduce you these theorems first, and then we'll go over the first theorem, how you can prove it, and then I'll leave it up to you to prove the rest of them. So the first theorem states that if two angles are right angles, then they're congruent. Well, that's pretty obvious, right? What about the second theorem? It states that if two angles are straight angles, then they're congruent. If two angles are complements of the same angle, then they're congruent. Then number four, if two angles are congruent, their complements are congruent. Number five, if two angles are supplements of the same angle, then they're congruent. Number six, if two angles are congruent, then their supplements are congruent. Number seven, if two angles form a linear pair, then they're supplementary. If two angles are vertical angles, then they're congruent. And that's basically it. Now, it is very important to understand what this all means. So what does this mean? If two angles are right angles, then they're congruent. Well, the best way to visualize it is by including an image. So here, for example, we have angle ABC, angle DEF, right? Two different angles, they're both right angles. They're congruent, okay? So if they're congruent, that means that the size and the shape is exactly the same, okay? It also infers that the measures are equal, if we can prove that. So let's say you want to prove it. So first you write given angle ABC, and angle D, F are right angles. You want to prove that these two are congruent, okay? So first, according to the statement reason table, you state that these are right angles. The first reason is given. Now, you can say that measure of angle ABC is equal to 90, and measure of angle D, E, F is also 90. Now, that is called the definition of right angles. Just as a side note, the definition states that an angle is a right angle if and only if the right angle measures 90 degrees. 
Also notice that IFF is an abbreviation for if and only if in mathematics, okay? So that is the definition of right angles. Then in the proof, you continue and state that measure of angle ABC is equal to measure of angle DEF. That is now the transitive postulate of equality, okay? Uh, the reason why here we're saying of equality, um, even if you don't write it, that's okay, uh, because it is already assumed that it's of equality, uh, it turns out that there's also a transitive property of inequality that we will learn in the next coming lessons, okay? So basically, we are using the transitive in step number two. We could have also used the substitution postulate here, so we could have used that, okay? And then finally, we state that angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF, and we're basically done with the proof. So again, the next theorem states that if two angles are straight angles and they're congruent, as you can see here, angle ABC is congruent to angle DEF. Then the third one stated that if two angles are complements of the same angle, then they're congruent. Well, what does that mean? So let's explain this. So here we have two angles that are complements of the same angle, right? Uh, so for example, this angle here, the 20 degrees, is complement to the 70 degrees, right? But we know that this 20 degree angle is also complementary to the 70 degrees. So these two angles, they're both complement of the same angle, the 70 degrees. Therefore, it turns out that these two angles have to be congruent, okay? And that's basically what this theorem is all about. Then for the fourth one, we're saying if two angles are congruent, for example, let's take these two angles here, we know that these two angles are congruent, then the complements have to be congruent, these ones, these have to be congruent as well, okay? Then the fifth one stated that if two angles are supplements of the same angle, then they're congruent. For example, this angle here, right? This angle is supplementary to 130. And similarly, this angle here, the 50 degrees, is also supplementary to the 130 degree angles. If both of these are supplements to the same angle, then these two angles have to be congruent. They're indeed 50 degrees. Maybe you can see a relationship between this theorem and the fact about vertical angles that we'll get to it in a bit. Then for the sixth theorem, if two angles are congruent, then their supplements are congruent. Again, if you, for example, take this angle here, 45 degrees to this one, they're both congruent. It turns out that these here, the supplements must be congruent as well. Then if two angles form a linear pair, then they're supplementary. In this case, that's just an example about the 45 degrees and 135 degrees. You know, they're a linear pair, they add up to 180 degrees. They are supplementary, okay? And then finally, we have if two angles are vertical, then they're congruent. So in this case, we will have that the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle C and the measure of angle D has to be equal to the measure of angle B. Notice that in all these theorems, I show you a picture and the picture had sample angle measures, okay? It doesn't mean that those have to be the measures for those theorems. Those are just examples. Okay, so now we have introduced all the theorems and at this point, uh, I will leave it up to you to prove the remaining theorems. We only proved the first one, okay? So again, here's a summary of today's lesson. We defined what an angle is, okay, which is defined in terms of rays. Then we looked at all the types of angles and their angle measures. Then we defined adjacent angles, vertical angles, supplementary angles, complementary angles, and the definition of a linear pair. And then we looked at all the eight angle theorems. So that's basically it for today's lesson.